Okay then. She never did. Easy, boy. Good morning. Good morning, Arthur. You going to get up? What's going on? I've forgotten what it was now. 
Damn it, Arthur. Let me sleep. Oh, I've been better. Oh, I'm sorry. Ms. Grimshaw? Hello? Well, how are you? Mr. Summers? Jose? Hey, Arthur. Come on! If we're gonna make it to this party, we yeah. sure as shit better clean up a little. So we're doing this? Oh, yeah. Old friend Dutch Van der Linde's finally showing his true colors. Social climbing. <laughs> Old Senor Bronte, that horrendous snake, has invited us to the ball, Cinderella. So my suggestion is we go and get you a gown. <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> Utterly. I ain't never been to a ball in my life. Nor have I, if I am being honest. I used to quite often. There can be fine pickets. Oh, no, 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 no pickpocketing. We are here to make real contact. What kind of contact? Well, I don't know. We'll find what we can. All I know for sure is we are going to a party at the mayor's house, and the guest of honor is the worst crook in town. <laughs> I'm sure that we will find something. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
gentlemen, Luca. I'm afraid the mayor does not allow guns at official functions after last year's incident. Luca here will take you to Mr. Bronte. I believe he is expecting you. Follow me, gentlemen. This way, please, gentlemen. Senior Bronte will be so pleased that you made it. We are honored to be here. That's beautiful. Come, come, this way. Uh, what a beautiful evening it shall be. Mr. Bronte is a very good friend with the mayor. Good evening, Pierre. Senor Napoli. As long as the mayor behaves himself, you know, Mr. Brante, he has a, the thing, you know. Jose, Phil, you join the party. We'll meet you out back after we pay our respects to Senor Brante. <laughs> come, come. We'll meet you out in the balcony when you're done. I'm <laughs> You've arrived, and you've washed for the prima volta questo mese, senza dubbio. Oh, this is quite a party you've invited us to. Yes, quite something, although I'm not quite sure what. So, this is San Denis High Society. Yes, apparently so. And all these people, these are friends of yours, <laughs> Senor Bronte? No, 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 not quite, not quite. But they certainly are afraid of me. Like that one. See, that wretch is the mayor. <laughs> Henri Lemieux. <laughs> He'll do anything for a dollar, and I mean anything. <laughs> Politics is a foul business. Yes. Oh, and that one too. That is Alberto Fuzar. He owns a sugar plantation out on the island, and he comes here to whore and despoil himself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, and that, that is Hobart Crowley, a, a Confederate major in the war. I mean, a hero, they say, but that is his, his very young wife. I mean, a young mistress, that's the natural order of things, yes, but a young wife is unseemly. Oh, oh, the Redskins. <laughs> I have no sympathy for them, because whoever is stupid enough to get tricked by the Americans, no, they get what they deserve, huh? <laughs> yes, and a letter to the mayor. Oh, yeah, that'll save you. <laughs> and that... That is Hector Fellows, mm. this self-righteous newspaper man. Maybe, maybe you will kill him for me one day. <laughs> well, we're not paid killers as such, not in cold blood anyway. I did not know you were so particular that uh, you wouldn't help a friend. Oh, I'm willing to help in any way I can, uh, within reason. <laughs> I'm going to pretend to understand what that means. I meant no offense, sir. I'm not taking None taken! <laughs> All these vulgar people, they hate me. <laughs> non vedo l'ora di guardarti morire! <laughs> well, uh, it has been wonderful conversing with you, but I can tell that you are very busy and I won't waste any more of your time. Yes, yes, yes. Go, enjoy yourselves and mingle with this vulgar scum. It'll make you long for the days when you could shoot each other and screw cows out on the open range. <laughs> <laughs> Those sure were the days. Good day, gentlemen. Mm, good day to you. But before you go, what uh, exactly are your plans here? Well, we've not made any... Well, we, we are going to need some money. Money, yes, of course. Well, there's, there's money at the trolley station. They keep a lot of cash there in the day. Now, I could not involve myself in such uh, matters. But you, pff, as a guest, yes, as my guest, bah, do it, huh? <laughs> okay, good day, gentlemen. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, ragazzi, adesso il vino buono. <laughs> I'll show you to the party, gentlemen, if you'll kindly follow me.
gentlemen, enjoy your evening and welcome once again to Saint Denis. Ciao, ciao. Gentlemen, let's go ingratiate ourselves. Have a wonderful night. Okay. Go find the mayor if you can and stay out of trouble and steal nothing unless it's information. Of course. Jose, you go find us some place to rob. Bill, go make us some new friends. I'm gonna find out if old Cornwall and what's his name? Milton knows we're here. Gentlemen, be well. for me to swim lengths in, you know? Yes, madam. <laughs> you know, I... Great fuck, I'm drunk. <laughs> you know, I used to be a great beauty. And an even greater wit. Darling time. What a total bastard it is, huh? And again, I always loved bastards. The real ones, I mean. <laughs> Wedlock. Hugely overrated. I tried it enough. Well, I mean, I tried both. You know, bastards and marriage. Oh, I even married a bastard. <laughs> it didn't work out so good. Oh, my God. I should not have got up this morning. I, I, I need to go and sit down and have a little rest. I'm just going to... Is anybody listening to me? Hello, sir. I know I look like a drunken harlot, but let me be very clear, young man. I am a drunken harlot. This is quite a town that you have here, Mr. Jameson. Oh, I don't live here. I was here for the poker. Oh, you play? Oh, it's, um, it's my weakness, my worst vice. Perhaps you should have it whipped out of you like you advocate whipping the sin out of others. <laughs> <laughs> Not whipping, sir, working, and besides, my vice is between me and my maker. I keep winning. Every gambler says that, Mr. Jameson. <laughs> yes, I know, but like I said, the next big tournament, which I will not be attending, is for a game too rich for my blood. I may be a knave, but I am a sensible knave. Is that so? Oh, sure, I'm not a wealthy man. I run a prison. The old riverboat tournaments are for card sharks and rich fools. A really big stakes game attracts oil men and such, like, from all over. My pockets are not deep enough for that. <laughs> you are a wise man. I'm a conservative man, at least. The fact is, since the war, the government has done an awful job of preserving law and order, Mr. Jameson. Mm. Well, I agree, Major. Well, at my prison, we are doing the best to remedy that failure. You know, my friend works in the Caribbean. He faces real rebellion. If we don't act decisively, we will endure the same here, and all of this, all of these garden parties and civility, they will be doomed. I believe in civilizing the masses, sir. But the first order of civilization is order, law, and order. I agree. Without law and order, we will have anarchy. But with too much law and order, won't we have dictatorship or worse? <laughs> Monarchy. The law should be a dictator. That is the American way. I thought the American ideal was liberty. <laughs> sure. Liberty under the law. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> Major Crowley, Mr. Chambers, I must go speak to someone first. Oh, the eavesdropper. I had to get away from that awful Major Crowley pontificating on law and order. You should see my prison. That's what law and order looks like. 
Hopefully as a visitor, not as an inmate. <laughs> Indeed. Well, enjoy the rest of your evening, sir. Evening, ma'am. Evening, folks. You're walking away from history, you fool! Women and men both deserve to decide the future. This is meant to be the land of liberty, but somehow I am not free to vote. You Look me in the eye and tell me in all honesty that I am not the equal of any man you've ever met. You're preaching again, Mrs. Whitlow. I'm doing good, fellas. And you're burying your head in the sand again, sir. <clears throat> Don't blame me for God's mistakes, if they were mistakes. <laughs> what do you mean? Women are inferior to men, madam. It's not my fault. It's a fact. Undeniable. Demonstrable. I will not deny it simply because of fashion. I'm intrigued, sir, to hear your arguments. I am your clear superior. You're different, but you're neither my better nor my inferior, sir. Okay, madam. I will not prove it by publicly thrashing you. Uh, well, I, you're stronger than me, sure. But as civilized beings? Haven't we moved past that? <laughs> Apparently not. Good evening to you, sir. I will go find some other people to threaten to hit me. If that's okay with you, sir. Hello there. I mean, did you hear what that man said? Inferior. Do you think women should have the vote? Oh, I don't care. I've never voted anyway. Well, that's no better. Anyway, if you'll excuse me, I'm still furious with that oath. Why are you looking at me that way? Evening all. How do you do? It really is a beautiful hat. <laughs> I got it from Mr. Wasp. He's the finest milliner in the state and quite the most interesting purveyor of the exotic. But don't tell anyone, sir. The women here are all desperate to know. Hello? <laughs> Still admiring my hat, I see. No, uh, not really. A man can appreciate fine ladies' millinery. There's no shame in it. Sure, guess. Well, enjoy the rest of your evening. No, it is a new shirt. Evening all. Sort of. Oh. Original. Hello. How are I'm you all doing? Hello. Did you hear him back there? The law? <laughs> no. I came down from New York for a job. I'm a banker. A banker? An investment banker. You're the fellows who never lend me money when I need it. And when I've got too much, try to lend me more. <laughs> and what do you do, Mr. Lafon? Originally furs, but now all sorts. Lumber, leather, even maple syrup. <laughs> My partners and I represent 20, well, more like 23% of all the trade heading south from Quebec into the U.S. And who do you bank with? Oh... The usual bunch of clowns in New York. Do you bank with anyone in the South? Not one I particularly like. Well, have you considered Lemoyne National Bank? Oh, I need a big bank, sir. We borrow a lot of money and generate a lot of cash. Some nervous small town bank could finish us in a bad small year. Small town? <laughs> We handle more cash and cash equivalents than any bank south of Manhattan, including St. Louis. Almost all the Caribbean trade banks with us. We work with all the remaining cotton growers in the U.S. who still use a lot of cash and 
We help finance half the reconstruction projects after the war. We love big clients, and we love cash. Our branch alone here in town has more cash reserves on site than any bank in the entire country outside of Wall Street and San Francisco. Well, perhaps we could discuss it further one day, Mr. Knightley. When it comes to bankers, I drive a hard bargain, but I'm very fair in business. I would at least like the opportunity to show you our business. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go find my fiancé. Of course. And congratulations. A wife is a wonderful thing. Could be interesting. How's your evening going? Met some interesting people. What about you? Did you speak to the mayor? I'm still looking for him. Well, look a little harder. Evening all. Hello, mister. Hello, ma'am. So, anyway, I heard that Judith Hawks, Bill, has taken a lover. Darling. Of course she has. That slippery fool has had that coming for years. But that's not the interesting part. What's interesting is that her lover is a pole. A Russian. Something like that. Like a Jew? <laughs> Not that bad, but nearly. <laughs> Excuse us, sir. We are having a private conversation. Um, uh, um, forgive me, ladies. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm new in town. Excuse me, both of you, but I must just go speak with my husband a moment. Her husband. He's if you heard what I said that. about that. But let's just keep that between ourselves. Good evening, sir. Enjoy your stay. <laughs> <in the name. laughs> you okay? <gasps> My lord. <sighs> the pesky nut. What a way to go, eh? Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. How'd you know this? Hello. The uh, fashion is Kilgore. Hello, Mr. Kilgore. No more. What is it that, uh, that you do? I'm, uh, I'm an adventurer. Oh, but me too. Pursuer of the exotic and the remarkable. An estate in this land of commonplace heathens. My card, sir. Pay me a visit in my atelier. I must just go and purge. I intend to stay thin until I pass away. Good evening. Thank you again, my fellow adventurer, and please do pay me a visit in my attendant. I'll try to. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. Evening, sir. Hello. So hard these days to find men of true morals, especially in journalism. Indeed, it is. <laughs> And you certainly won't find many here. How do you think they got so rich? Evening, folks. Well, How are you all doing? Good day. How's things? I cannot really think of anything to complain about right at this moment. Evening, ladies. Monsieur. How do you do? Evening, folks. How do you do, sir? Bien le bonjour. Evening, gentlemen. Gentlemen. Hi there, sir.
Evening all. Cherie. Evening, folks. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, monsieur. Of course, I'm married, Miss Tweedy. But marriage is more business than romance. And you're romantic, are oh, you, Mr. Oxford? Always have been. A true romantic, a dreamer. Why don't you let me show you someday? And you think my cousin would appreciate that demonstration? Your cousin is a cold woman. I'm a very lonely man. And I am more than someone's blanket against the night's chill. Good evening, Mr. Hawksbill. Please stop pestering me. Brad. How do you do, ma'am? I'm sorry you had to witness that. Slimy pig. His own wife's cousin. Man, you have no shame. I won't argue with you there, miss. I just want to be left alone. Good evening. I really do, do love Miss Tweet. It isn't just a champagne talk. Have you ever married the wrong woman, sir? No. But I ain't married the right one either. <laughs> well, I've made quite a habit. Ma'am, how are you? You know, I swear, half the men. Hello, sir. How are you all doing? Hello. Evening, Is there something sir. you want to say? Evening, gentlemen. Good day, sir. Good evening. The truth is, since the war, the country's doomed itself. I disagree. The war? The war was 30 years ago. I was just a boy. And since then, we have fought more wars. And we will fight more again. Now, the country tore itself apart. I, and what do you think, sir? I think war is a fine way of thinning the herd. <laughs> exactly. This man is a realist. I cannot believe I am hearing this. Excuse me. Sometimes, sir, the innocent are the damned. Enjoy your evening. I must go see my wife. Good evening. Hi there, ma'am. Yeah, How are you, you ma'am? Yoo-hoo! Sir? Um, I must apologize for matters be back there. Nice fellow, but his views are a little, well, uh, feminine. <laughs> Apologize to your wife, not me. Good evening. Why, hello. Enjoying yourself? You know, I think those fellas were making fun of me. Anyway, what you found out? Nothing too much yet. I'll be glad when this is over. Hello. Mr. Chambers, what are you loitering around me for? Ming, dear boy. Have you tracked down the mayor yet? Not yet. No chance. Hey, mister. Hello. Evening all. Bonjour, monsieur. How are you all doing? Good day. Good evening, ladies. Hello, dear. What is wrong with you? Either. Evening, sir. It ain't complex, I'm you. And only an idiot like you, buddy, would try to make it so. I will not deny idiocy, sir, but perhaps now is not the time. <laughs> Typical pansy. You are drunk, Ferdinand. <laughs> I'm not drunk, you fool. But this man, 
This man loves darkies. Hey, <laughs> you are pretty drunk. Yeah. What say you and me cool off? How do you do? <clears throat> Get your hands off me. Come on, sleep it off. Sit down and calm down. Count to a thousand. Then you can rejoin the party. How do you do? Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Henri Lemieux. I hope you're enjoying my party. The mayor. Allegedly. There's quite a place you got here. <laughs> it's not mine, and the city is horribly in debt, but we can still put on a good show. Do you know Evelyn Miller? My lord. The writer? Well, we seem to have another deranged drunkard on our hands. Shall we? Oh. 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 My lord, they're fantastic. Mr. Cornwall was quite insistent, I'm afraid. Uh, he shouted down the telephone for several minutes. Mr. Cornwall is a horse's ass and a bad horse. I'm very sorry, sir. It's not your fault. I'm a fool for trusting him. I'll come in and sign it in a minute. Let me enjoy the fireworks. Of course. Please say something about Cornwall. Yes. Find out what. Sure. Everything's fine. We have the place well secured. Good. Mr. Bronte has a habit of wandering about and reading whatever he likes. <laughs> We're watching him and his men like hawks. Thank you, Mr. Terry. Taking care? The telephone, it keeps ringing. The mayor said he will sign later. <sighs> Marie! Marie! Find that little reprobate Jeep and beat him. I will not have standard slip in this house. <sighs> have you lost your mind? I said, have you lost your mind? Come here. Come here. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Who do you think you are? This area is not meant for the likes of... You, you know this. The standards in this house are slipping. This is a final warning to you, miss. A final warning. Now get out of my sight.
Mr. Leviticus Cornwall. Top secret. Extremely confidential. Very interesting. Anything? I think so. Nothing. This town is a waste of time. Maybe not. I think. Gentlemen, I think we're done here. What did you find now? 
There's plenty of money moves through here, of course, and I, I think I found out how we can grab some of it. A big bank. Real one, I mean. But not yet. A city bank? Maybe. And a stuffed one. If we're gonna leave, that could be the one thing we need. There's also that trolley car station Senor Bronte told us about, and I heard about a high-stakes poker game. Come on. Here comes Lenny. All right. Let's get in. <coughs> Go home! Oh, I ain't never felt so awkward in all my life. All them folk all so pleased with themselves. Oh, high society pigeon shit. If you ask me, it's more like torture. Well, that's sort of the point, isn't it? Let the people torture themselves. Here's them papers I took. <sighs> Let me see you take this. I don't think so. Hmm. I might have an idea. Let me think on it. <laughs> Interesting times. Uh, I guess. So what's next? Dancing lessons? Deportment? More along the lines of armed robbery. Jose is handling reconnaissance on the bank. He and Abigail are gonna run some distractions, see how the law reacts. Good. Oh, and I spoke to Evelyn Miller, a fine man, here helping the Indian chief we saw. Yeah, I met him too, with the mayor. He's lobbying officials in San Denis on their behalf. Maybe we could help. Maybe. Now, I think there's a lot of money on the riverboat. A lot of money. And Trelawney, he's investigating for us. He says to meet him at the tailors. Okay. One big score down here, Arthur, and we disappear. We are almost heading home. And where is home? I don't know. Exactly. But I can smell it. I'm gonna go investigate this trolley thing old Bronte was talking about. Okay. <sighs>
Hi, Arthur. My lady. Working hard there. Somebody's got to do it. Hey, Arthur. What are you doing? Nothing. I don't believe you. It's just a little robbery, all right? Nothing serious. Good. What are you robbing? A stage. There's a stage coming through. According to the fella I met, it'll have a bunch of money aboard and no security whatsoever as it comes up the river trail between here and Catfish Jackson. Okay. That sounds worth investigating. You and, uh, who? I don't know. I, I thought I'd do it on my own. It'll be unprotected. Won't be a huge take, but I should make out okay. There ain't no such thing as unprotected. Now, who you want to go with? I guess you. Now? I don't need no hand-holding offer. Oh, come on, kid. <laughs> but if we decide to do it once we've had the look, I'm taking half the money. All right, let's get going then. It should be on its way right now. You're boring me now. It seems like only yesterday you and me was shooting our way in here to rob those fools. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll be glad to leave this place behind if I'm honest. Got a bad feel to it. At least it's got a roof. You've got a roof. Of course, I'm outside with the juniors. Oh, you ain't even 20 years old. Your time will come. Come on now, boy. Follow me. I saw a good spot for an ambush. So who's the feller told you about this? It's a sound lead. I told you. And what did he have to gain by giving you this information? You mean, did I give him money or a gun? You're just gonna have to trust me on this one, Arthur. Okay, okay, I do. You've more than proved yourself the past six months. Don't forget, I was on the run for murder before falling in with you boys. For three years. It ain't like I'm new to any of this. Uh, those fellers who killed your pa? Yep, and I'd do it again right now. Of course. Okay, here we are. Whoa! Let's leave the horses off the road. They're right here. I figured we'd take up a position behind these rocks. Yeah, seems good. The stage should be coming up the river from Catfish Jackson any time now. There it is. And I don't see no escorts neither. <laughs> this should be a cakewalk. 
Are you sure about that? You see any? As soon as they're close enough, we'll jump out, hit them fast. Just wait for my lead, okay? I said wait for my lead. This is a robbery. Drop your weapons and put your hands in the air. I said drop the weapon. Okay, okay. Just take it easy. All right, boy. Anyone else? Anyone inside there? Answer me! Last chance. Come out, or we're coming in. Shit! U.S. Marshal! I regret this! Are you? Evidently. That was not the way I was expecting things to go. You took us into a trap. Look, I'm telling you, it was good information. Wait. Look. Look, there's some money here. Not much. Yeah, it ain't much, because it was a trap. Stage companies do this all the time. They set up traps oh, to catch fools. Shit. Like you and me. I feel like a fool. Well, that's good, because you are a fool. He's still alive, so don't worry too much about it. Come on, get out of here before any more turn up. All right, see you back at camp. It's me! Hey there, Arthur. Hey. You've been doing good. Thanks, Arthur. Keep at it. Sure. Hey, what's wrong, Bill? You look, uh... Kind of confused, like somebody just asked you where the sun goes at night. Huh? <laughs> what do you mean? Nothing, nothing. Yeah, yeah, better be nothing. I 
Hey, I love it when you talk to me so tough Good and job, manly. Arthur. Then, you know, you make me feel like a little Mexican peasant who's got to be scared of the big American soldier. Now, you want to start something, buddy? Why are you always so angry, Bill? You shut up. Shut up. Arthur, why is he always so angry? Do you got any clue? He's every right to be angry. He's been dealt a bad hand. I'd be angry, too. You carry on, Bill. Thanks, Arthur. All right, I give up. Hey, Javier. Hello, Arthur. Gentlemen. Hi there. Don't work too hard. I work smart. Pearson. Hello, Mr. Morgan. Reverend. You want to sit, Mr. Morgan? You really need to start helping out around here. I know, I know. Lucky Dutch has a soft spot for you. Arthur. Fine, but make sure you get a good price for it. Thank you, Arthur. A drink in your hand. What a surprise. Just taking the edge off. What do you want? Always full of sunshine, ain't you? Old Misery Guts Morgan. What do you want, Micah? Hmm. Well, I... I want a friend, Arthur. I want hope. I want tomorrow to mean more than today. I want this whole damn shit show to have some kind of meaning I haven't understood. <laughs> but I ain't holding my breath. Yeah, I wouldn't. So, instead of that, how about you and me go and redistribute some property? Redistribute? Yep. From the Bowles Overland Stagecoach Company into our pockets. And you'll fight this time? I always fight. No, you always talk. But with coaches, guns are more significant than words. Oh, I'm fine with both, friend. Yeah. Come on, then. <laughs> you think we need an extra gun? Probably a good idea. Bill, come on. What are we doing? Coach, stick up. Well, excellent. I'm in. Micah and Bill, there's a death sentence. There's a good spot where we can hit it as it comes over the river into the swamps north of here. You got an actual plan this time? I got three sticks of dynamite, I got two pistols, I got you and Bill. That count as a plan? Not really. Well, let's go. So, <laughs> who told you about this? Please tell me it wasn't an O'Driscoll this time. Nope, a man on the inside at Bowles Overland. You can keep your funny little station friend in Rhodes. I go right to the source. Why did he tip you off? Charm, Bill. Not something you can learn, I regret to inform you. Very true. You're yeah, proof of that. Amusing. Charm. And a little money. Right. Which I recovered the next day when he met with a tragic boating accident. See, I don't like leaving trails, unlike the rest of you. What do you mean by that? We keep leading trouble right to us. We're carrying too much dead weight. We need to be leaner so we can move faster, quieter. I prefer a tight crew, just five or six strong gunmen. Well, nobody's stopping you. There's a whole world out there. Go find the strong men you want and leave. Hey, I like you boys. And with the price on our heads, we are wedded in this chaos, for better or for worse at this point. It would be a coward's move to bail on Dutch now. Not like John did. Heard about him disappearing on you fellas. For a year, wasn't it? Something like that. I don't trust him. I've been talking to Dutch. Feels to me like he's turned, challenging every move Dutch makes. I know you have your doubts about him, too, Morgan. No, I got no doubts about John. I've known him for 15 years. Well, if we really are gonna escape somewhere like me and Dutch have been talking about, let's cut across here. It'll be quicker. We're 
gonna need to cut some loose. From what Dutch says, the coffers are looking pretty good again. We could almost leave now if we chopped half the dead wood. We ain't doing that. I mean, why the hell do we need a gaggle of girls who won't even fuck you if you put a gun to their head? I'm sure you've tried. Is it too much to ask, considering they get a piece of every damn dollar I bring in? Everyone does their share. I don't see you lifting a finger around camp. Huh. Swanson does his share. Molly, come on. Well, uh, that's different. See, this is what I mean. I've always liked Abigail, though. That's my kind of girl. Sully, but strong. Well, I don't get the sense the feeling is mutual. <laughs> you just don't understand women, Morgan. <laughs> you got that right. Okay, here we are. I'll get the explosive planet. Coach should be coming through any minute now. in the road oh, over here so we can blow it as it comes up for the bridge I've got some good cover over here you hide behind this tree to my left Morgan Williamson you take the other side try to stay out of sight we don't want to spook them Gonna shoot the charges, Morgan? About time you did something. How much we get, cowpoke? Enough. Here. Thank you kindly. Thank you. Maybe I had you wrong, Arthur. Maybe you can win as well as fight. Or maybe you was lucky. Well, we'll see, I guess, how lucky any of us is. Exactly. All right. Better get out of here. Split up, I reckon. Let's go, girl. Whoa. <laughs> the 
There he is. Okay. Lots of work to do around here. <laughs> Someone should get on there. Have any luck out there? Hey, Charles. Hi, Arthur. Robbed the drunk one. You still glad you joined up with us? Arthur, of course. Well, we're glad to have you. No, Sounds good, Bess. Also, uh, a couple of morons threatened to lynch me. Hi there, Arthur. So, I ran away, came back, robbed them. <laughs> Good lad. How about you? A few bits and pieces. Nothing that exciting. Not yet, at least. So, you gonna look into this bank? Yes. I wanna make sure we're fully prepped before making any moves. For sure. Lenny! Yeah, all right there? Everything okay? Always. How are you, Mr. Morgan? Hey, Strauss. Bet you never thought you'd end up here, huh? I didn't know where some I'd end party, up. Some party, huh? And very productive. We got some good leads out of it. I'm glad we didn't have to tolerate all those idiots for nothing. Okay, I'll catch you later, then. Whatever you say. Arthur, you okay? Javier, you want to sit, Arthur? Rest up. I need you strong. I have no problem resting up. How are you, Mary Beth? Good. How is the big party at the mayor's house? Oh, not really my thing, but we got some good information out of it. Anyway, I won't disturb you. Sounds good. Evening. Evening, Arthur. Any leads? I'm working on something. Good. Well, let me know. Sounds good. It's a nice place you brought us to, my brother. Yes. Lovely, isn't it? Uh, makes me miss freezing to death in the mountains. <laughs> Yeah. Got some work ahead. Okay. Hi, Karen. Good evening. You look well. Thank you, Arthur. This air must be doing you good. Okay, then. Boy, boy. Make a fool out of me. Always laughing at me. 
all the way across the Atlantic, nearly as far as the Pacific, always laughing at me, dying to me and laughing to me. You okay? All of you turned him against me. You're driving yourself crazy. Okay, well, let's talk more later. Happy to be out of that suit? Never again. I hated every minute of that party. <laughs> well, we got some good leads out of it. All right, well, I should be getting on. Okay, then. Micah. Uh, Evening, Morgan. Working hard as ever? I make the money, not wash the clothes. Yeah, you keep telling yourself that. Whatever you say. You'll work it out, Dutch. You always do. Arthur. Another day and we're still alive. Of course we are. How are you, Mr. Smith? Fine. Well, <laughs> you've been up to much, have you? Hey, fellas. Not really. Hello there. You might be the youngest, but some of the others could learn a thing or two from you. Appreciate you saying that. Anyway, I'll leave you to it. Okay, when are you gonna get your act together? I'm just minding my own business here. Can't go on like this. Okay. No. <sighs> you heard any good jokes? Yeah. Well, all right. <laughs> Karen. Howdy. Hey. Fancy sharing it with me? No. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be stuck in the wilderness with you, Charles. I've had more fun, well, watching the grass grow. Will you dance with me? Please, go watch it. <sighs> you know, someday, you will warm up to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hey. Hey. You know, this camp ain't so bad. Not you bad having a at all. bad day or something? No. Uh, I get it. We'll leave you alone. Well, I should get back to it. Okay. I'm not much company right now. Well, we've been here forever. Hey. How's things? A little down. Oh, well. There she is. Good evening, Arthur. Hang in there. We're on the up. I know. I'm fine. I know things have been hard. Yes. See you later. Hi, Karen. You settling back in? I like it okay. here. Lots of places to explore. Well, don't explore too far. Okay, I'll catch you later then. Let me know if you find My lady. Candy. Hello. Is the boy behaving himself? For the most part. Okay, I'll leave you two to it then. Okay.
Hello, Mr. Morgan. All right. Arthur. Run off to join the circus. I was fine. Really, I was. I ate spaghetti. Well, hello, Arthur. Oh, it's Italian food. It's... I don't know how to explain. Was it nice? Yeah, really nice. And the people? They were nice, too. Everything was very... well, different. I slept in a bed in a room. Like a cage? No, no, no. More like a palace oh. in a story. How nice for you. Our little prince. <laughs> and how are you? Boys got used to fine living now, Arthur. Yeah. <laughs> what could be finer than a home in a swamp surrounded by alligators? Very true. Well, little prince, tomorrow we begin reading again. Hi, Jack. Mr. Morgan. Hey there. Hey, Arthur. Everything okay? Well, I'm still alive. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Big bad Morgan. <laughs> Not now, Uncle. I ain't oh. in the mood. Drink cow piss instead of milk again? <laughs> You're milking the wrong bit, son. Milking the wrong bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a metaphor, by the way. If you uh, say so. Or is it a simile? I, I can't remember. I feel like I need some cow piss myself. <laughs> Charles? You busy? No. Why? Fella sold me these plans. Oh, what do you gotta ask him for, Charles? Me? He's just gonna make a big drama out of it. You know he will. Drama out of what? <laughs> Only the easiest little banks Gore ever got taken. Well, I don't like robbing banks now. You like complaining and whining. We never robbed that bank in Rhodes. Arthur's good. He's the best man we got. And this is easy. But he complains a lot. <sighs> what is it? Turns out there's a big weakness in the building. They replaced a window to improve security, but the bricks are real weak. So? <laughs> the vault's right behind. The fellow sold me the plans, told me all about it. It's an open secret in town, due to be fixed any day, apparently. And we got enough explosives? I don't think so. Well, then, what are we waiting for? Come on. Well, just no wine in there, Arthur Morgan. Oh, shut up. I'll make you wine. Oh, give me this. It's been a while since I robbed a bank. I'm looking forward to this. Have you ever robbed a bank? Of course I have. And what about that one up near Canada with you and Bill a couple of years ago? You was the lookout, and not a very good one if I remember right. Can you believe this, Charles? I'm staying out of it. Try not to get us trapped in a burning barn this time, Uncle. And you try not to kill half the town over some imaginary gold. <laughs> he has a point there. from the back. Don't need nobody recognizing us. I agree. It's this way. Hold up.
up through here. There's the bank. Just there. Uh, I see it. Yeah. This way. Let's rest here till dark. <sighs> this is my kind of bank robbery. It's time. Let's go. All right. Wake up, beautiful. What, already? Yes, come on. Let's see what's going on. That boy over there, he's a guard for sure. Well, I'll go deal with him. Silently, please. Of course. Good work, Arthur. Follow me. Grab that spool, Arthur. Unspool that wire to about 30 feet away. Sure. Thanks. This won't take long.
go, gentlemen. Quick. Coming. Let's go. It's me. You're back. Arthur. Hi, Arthur. Charles? You busy? No. Son of a bitch! Watch out! Yeah, yeah. Been a while since I robbed a bank. I'm looking forward to this. Have you ever robbed a bank? Of course I have. And what about that one up near Canada with you and Bill a couple of years ago? You was the lookout. And not a very good one, if I remember right. Can you believe this, Charles? I'm staying out of it. Try not to get us trapped in a burning barn this time, Uncle. And you try not to kill half the town over some imaginary gold. <laughs> he has a point there. Probably best we approach the bank from the back. Don't need nobody recognizing us. I agree. It's this way. Hey, hey, easy. Hold it down. Let's cut through here. Just there. Grab that spool, Arthur. Unspool that wire to about 30 feet away. Sure. Thanks. This won't take long. Open. 
Let's see what we got in here. Check those other vaults. Yes, hurry up. We ain't got long. <clears throat> Looks like the coast is clear. Let's keep riding. Head for camp. Make sure there's no one tailing us. Hey, hold up a moment, fellas. See? Easy. Real easy. How'd we do? We did okay, I think. Here. And thank you, boys. That was fun. Now, don't forget to give the camp its share, Uncle. Oh, as if I would. As if. Now, split up, both of you. Let's get moving. You have been.
damn way. came from. I decided I don't need no suitors no more. My friend Bessie, she's all the company I need. Is that so? Hey there, mister. Glad to see some decent folk passing through town. Mother Nature, she's always fair to me, unlike some folk. That's so. Be seeing you. Clear the way. Hello. Hello. I believe we've met. I'm Dr. Barnes. If you're after tonics and elixirs, they're on the shelves on the back wall there. Okay, I'll take a look. Let me just stock up on my supplies. Sold. Feel free to keep browsing. Thanks for your assistance. Stay, girl. Ah, you came back. Such a long time. Time for a new gun, perhaps? Now, let me see. Very good chop suey on the street. Say I sent you. You made a good decision. I have some better quality components if you're looking for the best. Hmm. 
I can give you some better options for the sites. Would you be interested in me changing some of the parts at all? If you're heading anywhere near the slums, you should take a lot of bullets with you. Besides the shopper, I like it. It really suits you. I have some better quality components if you're looking for the best. Hmm. We do a range of excellent sights for that gun. It can really make the difference. Oh, you don't mess around. If the Italians keep taking from me, I don't know how much longer I will be able to stay open.
That's a fine firearm. I can give you some better options for the sights. Uh huh. We do a range of excellent sights for that gun. They can really make a difference. I think that's the right choice for you. Excellent choice. A man got shot right there on Courtney Street. Down here, you carry a gun. Maybe I should have chosen a smaller store in Chinatown. Something cheaper. But I'm sure things will turn around. Any help? Let me know if you need anything else. I can see you look after your firearm. Glad to see you're taking care of it. So many people don't. Looks like you've been taking good care of that gun.
that away, okay? You don't need to point that around. Nobody impressed. Let's go, girl. Please. Hello, ma'am. What is your matter? Hey there. Ah. Yeah, good girl. This has been, as you all know, a long time coming. The state of Lemoyne has outgrown this man. Lies and perversions of the truth. But you, you have not gotten past your memory of it. Ha! This is a goddamn travesty. A federation Guess built the on the right. It's over now, huh? A senior member of the outlaw gang they call the Lamorne Raiders. Look here. Guilty of got carpetbaggers taking right. bounty jobs. Arms dealing and Damn countless mongrel. atrocities against lawmen and state officials. I say to you today, we will not tolerate these intimidation tactics any longer. Come on. For laying waste to this good state and abusing the fine people in it, you will die. Hell, I'm weary of it. Pull it. Oh, Lord. Now let this serve as a message to any other ingrates that, that believe they know better than the United States. Lamorne will seek out gang activity and eliminate it. The Raiders are finished. What do you do to it? que j'ai trop bu. Vraiment, vraiment trop bu. Gentlemen. Bonsoir. Uh, you, mister, excuse me. Hey, friend. Good evening to you. Bonsoir, Evening, monsieur. sir. a bad man. One moment, please. This is extremely delicate. Hey. There. Oh, wonderful. May I help you? Well, I, I don't know. I met you, remember? At that party? Oh, yes. You saved my life. Oh, I am eternally yours, Algernon Wasp, purveyor of the exotic and the exquisite. Enchanté. Uh, Tacitus Kilgore. How can I help you? May I interest you in a, uh, hat? Perhaps. Uh. How about a nymph? I import them from Brussels. The idiots in this town all want Italian nymphs, but the Italians make the coarsest of marble. I mean, quite frankly, the Baroque is an abomination. Belgium. Now that is a land for the connoisseur. Oh, yes. Yeah, as I always say. But, you know, I'm not... Really a nymph kind of man. No, oh, of course, too ephemeral. You want something uh more tangible, more gothic. I also make corsets. Would you like a corset? I always wear one. Uh no, I don't think so. Yeah, I ride a lot of horses. Um the whalebone might stick in. Mm, well, a cup of tea. Uh sure. And what is it you do, Mr. Kilgore? Are you a gentleman of leisure? An aesthete? <gasps> An artist. Uh, I suppose I'm <clears throat> kind of an adventure. Ha! Huh. Yes, of course you are. Here, be careful with the china. Sir, it is French. Not Belgian? No, 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 no. They are Philistines in that area not to be trusted. Youth, eternally preserved in marble is more their specialty. I fear China will always elude them. Now, why are you here exactly? I don't know. You're an adventurer. A wanderer, a lost soul, cast out from heaven? <sighs> sure. Well, I do pay exceptionally well for certain objects needed for my art. Mm, you do? I do. Exceptionally well. Well, what do you need? Let's see. Right now, I have a couple of commissions. I need at least 15 egret plumes. Good ones, obviously. I also need 15 assorted orchids. Here's a list. Okay. 
I will see what I can do. Thanks for the tea. Thank you, Tacitus. It'll be very worth your while. Where's the feller who was here last time I came in? Oh, you probably mean my brother. Far away from here, I hope, not sullying my good name any further. So you don't know nothing about those fellers he had chained up in the basement? Of course not! I was out of town! Now, is there something I can help you with? I really don't want to talk about that sordid business. Put a pillar and blanket in your cell. 
Come on. Don't Get have those to hands go down I can like see this. Stay put or I'm filling you with bullets. Hello there, mister. Yes? 
Uh, I'm, uh, uh... Sorry. I'm looking for, um, the mayor. Yes. Please, uh, Mr. Uh, Kilgore, or what was it? Um, I forget. Quite. Welcome to government. Democracy. An interesting idea, huh? Monsieur Lemieux? Come in. Oh, hello, friend. Hello. Tacitus Kilgore. Oh, really? Okay. Now, you are not going to rob me again, are you? No. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry about it. But you are not a very popular man. There's all kinds of nasty people want to speak to you, Mr. Tacitus. I know. They won't hear anything about you from me. But? Uh, yeah, there's always a but. Of course, I'm a politician. Who needs killing? Nobody. We are not savages, merely Frenchmen. Don't be ridiculous, killing. Oh, dear. Terrifying, yes. I suppose I can do that almost as well as kill. I'm sure you can. Now, it's all very ethical. You see, I've been trying to open a major museum, a place of culture to elevate people's souls. And what do museums need? Uh, art. <laughs> and how do you buy art? I don't know. I buy art of some nasty little man from Paris selling me some destitute aristocrat's collection of old masters that it turns out he may have been painting himself. Ouch. Ouch, indeed. But these are good paintings. I can't make the difference, and I'm French. Only this even nastier little man from New Haven has come here to verify my paintings, and he's saying that they're all fake. So? So perhaps he can be persuaded to revise his opinion. Oh, he's been so beastly. Exactly. Now, Jean-Marc, perhaps you can take Mr. Arthur, oh, I mean Mr. Tacitus, to meet a little Professor Shitface and have a word with him. Saint-Denis welcomes you like a son, sir. Bonne chance. Come, sir, if you don't mind. The gallery is just at the end of this avenue. As I said, he is a beastly man, this professor. Believe me, friend, you ain't seen beastly yet. Not even close. You know, I thought we French had a monopoly on arrogance, but no. An overeducated American can be far, far worse. Well, luckily, there ain't too many overeducated Americans around. Yes, indeed. The mayor had such grand plans for our city and its people. We shall have truly broad democracy, working for the rich and the poor alike. It would be a travesty for this one man's opinion. <laughs> Put that into jeopardy. Opinions can change, can they not? Oh, they change all the time. Of course. Power of reason is not to be underestimated. Reason. Well, that's one word for it. Good, good. You do not look so much like a rhetorician, but uh, Monsieur Lemieux has placed his faith in me. Looks can be deceiving. The mayor understands just what I can do, I'm sure. Go to the right up here. The gallery is just up ahead. There, Mr. Arthur, there! No. Oh. What's his name again? Professor Shiftaker. Your findings in there. The mayor knows very well what I've found. 
Every painting was a brazen fraud. <laughs> that's a big claim. One that's gonna upset a lot of people. Myself included. I'm afraid that's just hard cheese. Now, I've got a train to catch back to New Haven. Hold on. I see it's gonna take a fist in your face to persuade you. Oh. Oh, wait. Wait. I gotta punch you to change your mind. I, I couldn't. My reputation. You gonna think of your reputation when your brain is jelly? I I'd never be published again. Maybe I'll just kill you. Make Ugh. this all go away. <laughs> I relent! I relent! There! <laughs> you see, Professor? An academic reputation is really far less important than a broken nose. Y yes, sir. I, I, I see that now. The thing is, now people are gonna look at those paintings and love them. So, you're helping people, really. I, I... You know I'm right, Professor. Please. Not get me upset with you no, again. No, 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 sir. You're right. You're very, very right. So you're gonna send the mayor what he needs. Um... Because otherwise, I'll be in New Haven. No, no. We don't want that. Of course uh, we I'll don't. I'll write my paper this evening, sir. Very good, Professor. Very good. So, turns out, all those paintings were real after oh. all. Problem solved. Wonderful, wonderful. The mayor shall be so pleased. Sure. Was uh, Professor Schiftecker happy to change his mind? He wasn't initially, but uh, he came around in the end. Oh, my lord. This is not right. Trust me, I've done much worse. We shall burn in hell for this. Here's open. Here. The mayor asked me to give you this. Oh, thank you. 